the cloud. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Bob Zuckerman. I am the executive director of the Downtown Westfield Corporation. And I'm very excited to have uh, two guests joining us this morning for this very, very important webinar on the new bag law. I'm sure that's not the official name of it, but our guests will tell you what the official name is. It does go into effect on May 4th on two, in 2022, which is really right around the corner. So everyone really needs to know what it's going to take to comply with this. And that's why we're having this webinar. Uh, we're recording this, so you may be watching the recording. And if you have questions for us, you can always email us at info at westfieldtoday.com. I'm going to ask everyone to mute uh, unless you have a question. We have a um, we don't have a that large of a group this morning, so I think rather than moderate uh, through chats, um, we'll let people ask individual questions. Just uh, just um, you know, raise your hand or just let us know that after the presentations that you wanna that you have a question or you have comments, and uh, we'll entertain those questions and comments. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to be joined, like I said, by our two guests. Erin uh, Jensen is our first speaker, and Erin is an environmental specialist uh, in the Bureau of Planning and Licensing within the Division of Sustainable Waste Management at the New Jersey State Department of Education uh, of Environmental Protection. Uh, DEP, if you don't know, is our statewide environmental protection agency. And Erin is a specialist um, in this field and has been doing webinars around the state, um, many dozens of them, uh, along with our other guest, uh, Joanne Jumendon. Joanne is the executive director of the New Jersey Clean Communities Council. Uh, Joanne is also a Union County resident and was just informed this morning uh, that Joanne worked for the county uh, for over 30 years, worked with our, our town administrator, Jim Gilday, uh, among others. So she's certainly familiar with Westfield. Um, so we're gonna get started first with Erin. And uh, Erin, it's, it's, it's all yours, take it away. Great, uh, thank you so much, Bob. Um, so just give me a moment as I bring up the presentation. Okay, are you able to see that? Yes. Awesome, thank you. So good morning, everyone. As Bob mentioned, my name is Erin Jensen and I'm with the DEP. I'm part of the Division of Sustainable Waste Management. And today we're gonna to talk to you about the single use plastics reduction law. So I'm here to go over the details of the law. And if you have any questions um, that you maybe don't, maybe don't wanna forget, you can throw them in the chat or you can wait until both of our presentations are done. And we'll have like a big Q and A section at the end. So we're gonna start with the first portion of the law which deals with single use carryout bags. So um, beginning May 4th of this year, just around the corner, the law prohibits all stores, food service businesses, all retail um, and grocery stores from selling or providing single use plastic carryout bags to customers. In addition, grocery stores, which are defined as being larger than 2,500 square feet, may not provide or sell single use paper carryout bags. Uh, you'll see here in the definition of grocery store, you, you'll, you'll see it's a self-service retail establishment that occupies at least 2,500 square feet. Um, that size definition only pertains to grocery stores. Uh, we get a lot of questions like, you know, what if my liquor store is less than 2,500 square feet? Uh, can they use paper? And it, they don't go together. So a liquor store is just retail or a store. And you'll see there's no size provision there. So when you're thinking 2,500, it's, it's really just to determine whether a store that sells grocery items is considered a grocery store in this law or not. Anyone under that can, that size uh, can use paper bags, but gro grocery stores, which are almost all going to be bigger than that size can. So I hope uh, that helped cl clear that up if anyone had a question about it. So as defined, single-use plastic carryout bags are 
carry out bags that are made of plastic that are not reusable bags. So for example, in the case of a grocery store that cannot use plastic or paper bags, they were going to want to offer possibly for sale or, or possibly not um, reusable carry out bags. And to, be def to meet the definition of a reusable bag under this law, they have to meet all three portions of the definition. The first of which is it must be made of polypropylene fabric, PET, non-woven fabric, nylon, cloth, hemp product, or another washable fabric. Uh, so basically the product needs to be washable, either hand wash or machine wash. They must have stitched handles. Uh, that's either from a traditional stitch or what's known as ultrasonic stitching, but does not include adhesive handles. And they must be designed and manufactured for minimum of 125 uses. So if a bag does not meet all three parts of this definition, it won't be allowable uh, as a reusable bag. And you'll see the definition portion that discusses handles really limits um, what can be a reusable bag as it, it doesn't include thicker plastic bags. Uh, there are many places, uh, particularly in other states that um, have similar laws to us and they allow the thicker plastic bags as reusable, but having a stitched handle really cuts those out of this law. So those are not allowable either. This portion of the law also has exemptions. So we're gonna go through these real quick. So, and these are permanent exemptions. So a bag used solely to contain or wrap uncooked meat, fish, or poultry. That would be um, like in your, your meat section of a grocery store, the thinner plastic bags that you put the packages into so they don't leak into your other items when you put them in your bags. Um, bag used solely to package loose items. So things like in your produce section for your fruits and vegetables. Um, for bulk items, like if you have a bulk sale for coffee or nuts or grains. Um, bags used for greeting cards, baked goods, flowers, small hardware items, um, those all fit. Bags used solely to contain live animals such as fish or insects at a pet store. So you know, those are very specialty bags. Um, that also includes things like live bait. And also bags used solely to contain food sliced or prepared to order, including soup or hot food. So these are bags, they're specialty bags, specifically meant to hold a food item. So you're in your jelly section, you're, the bags that your fresh sliced meats and cheeses get put into, uh, there are bags out there meant to specifically hold a hot rotisserie chicken um, that would be included. Um, there are bags at certain convenience stores that are, they're small, typically rectangular. They have, and they have a solid base meant to hold things like hot soup or other hot food like chili. Um, so they don't tip over in your car. So that's like a very specialty bag. Basically, it's meant to hold the item itself and not other bags. So you, you wouldn't be able to purchase wings, for example. Those get put to a, into a container and then that container gets put into a bag. Um, that would not count. It's meant to hold the item itself. In addition to all those um, bags that are laundry, dry cleaning, or garment bags, <coughs> bags provided by a pharmacy to carry prescription drugs and also bags used for newspapers, typically for delivery, are all exempted. And as a department, we have the ability through rule regulation or guidance to add similar bag types to this list. The next section that we're gonna talk about is polystyrene foam food service products. If you're not sure what polystyrene foam is, it's styrofoam, but styrofoam is a brand name kind of a like Kleenex. So uh, we have to call it its technical term, which is polystyrene foam. So this portion of the law also becomes effective May 4th and prohibits all persons and food service businesses from selling or offering for sale any polystyrene foam food service product and prohibits all food service businesses from selling or providing any food service polystyrene foam or selling any food served in 
polystyrene foam food service products. So that one is sort of a two part. So the second half talks about food service businesses not being able to provide food in these containers. So none of your takeout or you know, leftovers at a restaurant can be put into a polystyrene foam container. The first section deals with all persons and food service businesses. So this part covers sales of polystyrene foam. So you wouldn't be able to go into a store and purchase containers or bags of polystyrene foam. So you couldn't go and buy packages of plates or cups or anything like, or bowls that are made of polystyrene foam. And this is the only section of the law that limits sales of the items in stores. So this section also has exemptions. However, they're temporary exemptions and they will automatically expire on May 4th of 2024. However, we do have the ability to extend that for an additional period of one year um, if we determine that the market is still not um, has still not come up with new alternatives for these very specific products. So these products are disposable long-handled polystyrene foam soda spoons, um, which I do not believe exist. I've never seen a spoon made out of styrofoam, um, but if you do, they are exempted for two years. You have two ounce or less portion cups uh, that have lids, typically used for hot foods like sauces or, or sides. The trays that are used under raw meat, fish, or poultry. Again, those are only for raw products. Any food product pre-packaged pre by the manufacturer with a polystyrene foam food service product. Um, for example, um, anything that like say the grocery store will get in from outside of the grocery store um, from the manufacturer that's pre-packaged already, they would be allowed to sell for an additional two years. So those are things like eggs, uh, instant ramen noodles, typically come in like a polystyrene foam cup. Um, any of those would be allowable for the stores to continue to sell for two years. And again, we do have the ability to add to this list if necessary. And I just wanna remind everyone to please stay muted until the end of the presentation, if you don't, uh, if you don't mind, and then we'll call on people if you have questions. So this section of the law also has a waiver option. Um, it's only for polystyrene foam food service products. And to be eligible, you will have to meet one of the two situations laid out in the law. The first one is that there are no feasible and commercially available alternatives for a specific polystyrene foam food service product, or a person or business has less than $500,000 in gross annual income, and there is no reasonably affordable commercially available alternative to the polystyrene foam food service product. These waivers do need to be submitted to us um, with the, the application form that is available on our website at this link here. It must also include a justification, backup information, um, you know, if you're if you're choosing the second option here, about five hundred thousand dollars, you want to make sure you're also submitting proof of your gross annual income. You want to send, you know, product invoices for the ones you're currently using versus what the alternatives would be. You know, you have to give make sure you provide all the information we could possibly need to be able to review. If you are approved for a waiver, it would be for a period of one year. If you would need an extension for an additional year, you may you have to make sh sure to send us more written information uh, requesting the, ex the extension. And again, it can only be for one additional year. After that, they will expire and you'll have to reapply again if you're still in need of a waiver. The next section we're gonna talk about is straws the single use plastic straws. This portion became effective on November 4th of last year. And it says that food service businesses shall only provide a single use plastic straw to a customer upon request by the customer. So straws, 
straws that are made of plastic should no longer be given out freely, um, just, you know, all the time, automatically, um, at restaurants, drive throughs uh, delivery services, pretty much anything that has to do with the food service business. The food service businesses are required to keep an adequate supply of straws, specifically single-use plastic straws, on site um, in case someone does specifically request a plastic straw. And again, this part, part of the law does not limit sales of this item. So you would still be able to go into a store and purchase boxes of straws or even packages that were prepackaged with straws uh, like juice boxes. This law supersedes and preempts all municipal and county rules, regulations, codes, or ordinances. So if your town has any of those that relate to any of the materials that we've discussed so far today, those laws would end um, when the state law became effective. Um, so if you have any specific rules that are specifically required by your town, those would no longer be the case. Um, and you would need to follow the state law at that time. On our website, you can find a timeline of you know, effective dates, when the law was signed, when things expire. Um, and again, this is on our website, so you don't have to you know, memorize it right now. You can also find charts of different business types and which portions of the law will affect them. It's not an exhaustive list. There are plenty of other businesses out there and we're also looking to expand this chart, but it just gives a kind of an example. We get a lot of questions about enforcement. Uh, what we're focused on right now is education. As you see, you know, through these webinars that we're doing when, and you'll learn more about what Joanne's been doing with clean communities to do education as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so education is really our focus right now, but when enforcement needs to be done. Enforcement authority has been given to the DEP, to the counties, through the County Environmental Health Act, and also individual municipalities. In most cases, enforcement actions will be done through municipalities or counties. I know that this County Environmental Health Act or CEHA agents um, have already been given um, some inspections on their work plan starting in May for this law. And municipalities will each have their own program to set up, uh, just like in most other cases where things look a little different from town to town. So it may look a little different, but that's most likely where any enforcement will be done. And then the Department of Health specifically was giving enforcement authority for the plastic straw provision. So those should already be being done. Um, if not, Again, they're probably focusing on education. They do have, Department of Health does as a website and an email address set up if you have questions uh, for straw enforcement. And they will most likely be working with their local health officers. Their enforcement plan is um, still in uh, the creation mode. The specific penalties though are laid out by the law and they will be consistent. So at first, the first violation, it'll be a warning. After that, it's $1,000 per day for the second offense, and then $5,000 per day for the third and any subsequent violations. <coughs> Excuse me. Our website also has FAQs. I just pulled a couple um, of our more common questions. So do reusable ba carry out bags need to be made with a minimum amount of recycled content? No, there's no requirement in the law for that. However, it is something that we always encourage. Uh, can the public use their own bags at the store that don't meet the definition of a reusable bag? And that is yes. Um, residents and customers can continue to use the, their own bags, either their own reusable bags or bags that they've had stored up like plastic bags at home. They can continue to bring those into the stores and use them to package goods. Um, it, it, the law really only covers what um, can be provided to or sold to you at a store. Um, can I still buy packages of paper bags and lawn bags at the store? Yes, uh, this, that section of the law does not cover, does not limit anything sold. You could still buy things like 
paper lunch bags, lawn collection bags, um, all of that from stores or grocery stores. Uh, we get a lot of questions about garbage bags. Um, garbage bags are not covered in this law. It only covers carry out bags. So those will not be affected. And we get questions about where can businesses find assistance. So the New Jersey Business Action Center has been tasked with um, the business education portion of the, of the law and educating the businesses. They set up all of our webinars among many other things. And uh, we have their information you, right here. There's a website. Um, they also have a live chat function that are, they're open Monday, Friday, eight to five. So you can either call or go on their website for the live chat if you have business related questions or go to their website. You'll also see that information here. For, for more information, you can email the DEP at singleuseplastics at dep.nj.gov. You can also visit our website where you'll find a full list of FAQs, a copy of the legislation, the timeline and the chart that I showed you, as well as uh, business related flyers created by the Business Action Center in both English and Spanish. Uh, you could find our waiver applications there and any other information that we have will be posted there. You'll see here again, the information for Business Action Center. And Joanne uh, will speak to, to you about clean communities, but you can visit them at njclean.org or bagupnj.com. And that is it for me. So I'm gonna stop sharing and hand it over to Joanne Jamendon. Good morning, everyone. Um, Bob, I don't know if you wanna take any questions. I don't see anything in the chat or if I should just, um start my presentation um so good morning everybody i know this is a lot of technical information talking about rules and regs first thing on a monday morning um my presentation is a little bit lighter we're going to be talking about public information and outreach and that is the role of new jersey clean communities council um, relative to the single-use plastics law first i'm going to tell you what Clean Communities is, because many people don't know. So I have to make sure I, I do a two minute overview. Um, we are a statewide nonprofit litter abatement organization. So under that purview, we actually provide grant funding to every county and every town in New Jersey. That bears repeating, every year we give grant funds to every county and every municipality in New Jersey. We work with all of our towns, we work with all of our counties, and we help coordinate um, training and outreach and education, enforcement, and obviously cleanup programs. And we've also transferred um, the ability to spend grant money, um, not just on cleanup education and enforcement, but, but also on um, the single-use plastics outreach and the purchase of reusable bags. So I mentioned grant money, um, and it's not a little bit of money. Um, we actually last year gave out $20.7 million. 80% of those funds go to municipalities. So your, the Township of Westfield has a Clean Communities Coordinator. The County of Union has a Clean Communities Coordinator. Um, and that's important because as we talk about certain things and you want more information, um, obviously you can go to me, but there's uh, plenty of local contacts for you to deal with. Um, some of the money, 10% of, of all those funds go to counties, 10% goes to parks, and then the New Jersey Clean Communities Council gets $375,000 annually to run the program statewide. So what are we doing here today? We're here to talk about New Jersey's um, single-use plastics law, which is the most progressive bag ban law in the country. And why do I say that? Um, we are the ninth state to ban plastic bags, but we are the first state to ban paper bags as well in grocery stores greater than or equal to 2,500 square feet. If you've read the law, you'll know the reason why um, we are passing the law relative to plastic bags, straws, and, and polystyrene is all about preventing litter. It's all about getting rid of um, plastic in the ocean. 
I just uh, read the other day that um, they guesstimate that New Jersey alone uses 4.4 billion plastic bags a year. Um, there's been a lot of negative comments about the law. Nobody in New Jersey likes change, um, but if we can eliminate billions of bags just in one year, I think um, it's gonna be good for the environment. So who is involved in the outreach and education of this law? So the New Jersey Business Action Center has, as Erin mentioned, is in charge of doing outreach to businesses. Um, New Jersey Clean Communities is responsible for doing outreach to the public. And of course the DEP makes sure um, that what we say is correct and um, in alignment with what the law says. So all three of us uh, work together constantly. We meet every week and we discuss what we're doing and make sure we're on the same page. I also have to note that we also work with the New Jersey Food Council, which represents um, almost every grocery store and every convenience store in New Jersey. Um, I think it's important to know that they do know that this law is coming and they are prepared. Um, going back to the New Jersey Business Action Center, all of you obviously on this call today are businesses. So if you don't know about the New Jersey Business Action Center, these are some of the things that they can help you connect to the agencies and state government. And the message that they usually present here today is why are we talking about this now? Well, from a business standpoint, um, obviously all of you um, have been using plastic bags. We wanna make sure that you have time to use up the bags you've already purchased and to be able to locate um, alternatives to plastic bags, alternative to paper bags, if the need arises as well as um, plastic straws and polystyrene. They have a vendor clearinghouse. Um, this is where you'll find it on their web, which provides you a list of businesses that sell the alternatives to all of these products. And if you want to uh, go to a live chat, um, I think Erin mentioned that as well, which they have available Monday through Friday in both English and Spanish. If you go to business.nj.gov, um, they'll jump right on a, a chat with you if you have any questions. So back to New Jersey Clean Communities and what our role is. So for the next three years, we will be getting an additional $500,000 to develop a statewide education and outreach program. Um, we are here to work with the myriad of stakeholders um, in New Jersey, which is really every business. I, I can't think of any other um, legislation that affects every shopper, every resident, and every business in New Jersey. So we're, we're trying to leave no stone unturned in getting the word out, um, working with governments, trade organizations, um, chambers, downtowns, and we're doing press releases, PSAs, a lot of paid advertising, which I'll talk about in a minute as well as some limited distribution of free reusable bags. Um, unfortunately, we are not giving bags out to businesses directly. We are working with our government agencies. We are working with food banks, um, our seniors and other underserved communities throughout New Jersey. But most importantly, um, we are here to uh, develop a statewide campaign and share that branding. So if there's only one thing that you learn from me on this beautiful spring Monday morning, it's the name of our website, which is bagupnj.com. This was done in relation to um, our new program. This is our campaign and logo, which is trademarked and copyrighted Bag Up NJ, but we are giving it to everyone because we want this to be the face of the plastics Ban. I know Aaron will be mad that I say that, um, but that's what it is. So if you go to bagupnj.com, you want to go to the downloads page. That is designed as a toolkit for residents, for businesses, for governments to use. We have a, a plethora of free reusable um, artwork. This is some of what we have available, which is our Bag Up NJ 
logo. Like I said, the graphic is provided to you free. Um, the Skip the Straw logo, we have a whole bunch of social media and web banners, um, sandwich board signs, flyers, billboards, business intent cards, and a shopping list. I'm going to go through all of that. Actually, I'm going to go back real quick. Um, the big thing I forgot to mention is at the bottom of the page, which is 43 days. Um, there's 43 days between now and May 4th. So if you haven't um, gotten rid of your plastic bags yet, you have 43 days to do that. Um, it's not mandatory that you provide reusable bags, but if you would like to, you have 43 days to do that. Um, okay, let me go back to my campaigns here, sorry. So we have two major campaigns, which we already mentioned, Bag Up NJ and Skip the Straw. This is a couple of screenshots from our downloads kit. We have, not just English and Spanish, but we have English, Spanish, Portuguese, Korean, Hindi, and Chinese available in a, um, a few different social media posts. These are just some examples of things we've done throughout New Jersey and on our website. I talked about um, sandwich board signs. Not only am I from Union County and I worked for Uni County for 35 years, but I worked in Westfield right on uh, Broad Street for 14 years. Um, and I know that Westfield has the best shopping, downtown shopping district, probably of anywhere in New Jersey. And this would be a great um, place if you wanna designate whether it's Earth during Earth Month, um, if you have you know, shop local events to put um, sandwich board signs along Broad Street or um, North Avenue, and uh, just to get people walking by, get in the know. If you want to give something out at your store to promote this, um, we developed a shopping list that has uh, bring reusable bags, um, number one on the list, because a lot of people tell me that they have bags. They just tend to forget them when they're um, going to the store. We have this available in um, a variety of languages as well. Um, I think this is probably uh, the best thing we've developed for somebody like a downtown organization or businesses. These are folding business cards and tent cards. Um, the artwork is available on our website. I don't know if you could see, we have a couple of different options. This one's a little bit bigger. This is our business card size. This is something you can give out to your residents, staple onto a um, package or put in the bag. This is something you can use if you're a restaurant, put on um, the table for folks to read while they're dining. It does have a little QR code that goes right to the DEP website and it's available in English and Spanish. I know you have a really robust green team there in Westfield. So if they're giving out messaging, this is, um, available to you, like I said, not only on the website, but I know um, the county clean communities coordinator has a stock of these that they've already printed and would be available to you if you'd like to use them. Um, we have a flyer and the Business Action Center has also developed flyers in English and Spanish. Once again, they are available on our website as well as our radio PSAs and a video PSA that was done by the town of Westfield. Um, I mentioned before, we've done some bag giveaway programs. A lot of these actually were done in relationship with our business partnership program, whereby the businesses uh, provide funding to the Clean Communities Council. We in turn buy bags with our logo and their logo, and we do some bag giveaway programs. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think I mentioned before that we are doing some limited bag giveaways, but we want we didn't want to do just a plain bag giveaway. So we are featuring iconic locations from throughout New Jersey. We have this is a three-year campaign. So hopefully we'll be able to um, highlight at least, you know, at a minimum all 21 counties at least one time. So our first bag, which we have in stock now are the boardwalk theme, which is Atlantic City and uh, seaside boardwalks and our waterfall bag, which is from Hunterdon County and Passaic County. I'm actually speaking at Hunterdon County 
um, chamber this Thursday. Our next set of bags um, will feature the Turtleback Zoo and the Camden Aquarium and the waterfronts in both Hudson and Cumberland County. So hopefully we'll have a Union County bag coming soon. Like I said, we're doing a lot of outreach. If you've been to the Department of Motor Vehicle, um, notably in Rahway and Elizabeth, you have uh, seen recently, because we just kicked off our campaign about a month ago, we do have a uh, Bag Up NJ campaign. Um, tap into, and this will be in every, I think there's 187 tap into sites um, in New Jersey. So we will be promoting our new video on all um, tap into sites throughout New Jersey starting April 1st. What else are we gonna be doing? New Jersey Transit, we're gonna be working, um, we've already uh, approved our campaign. We're just waiting for the buses um, to have the messaging. So they will be in Union County and a lot of the major cities throughout New Jersey. We have some radio PSAs. Um, we will be doing a bag up NJ night on May 4th at the Somerset Patriot Stadium. Um, so if you wanna come watch a ball game and get a free bag on May 4th, that's where we're gonna be. We also have uh, a school video PSA contest and we're working with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And so every school in New Jersey is eligible and all of their students to submit a up to a 60 second PSA about single use plastics. So we'd like to engage everybody. Um, we also would love for the township, um, every town and county to pass a resolution designating the month of May as Bag Up NJ month. Um, and once again, if you have any legislators from uh, Westfield, we want to encourage them to do a bag giveaway program or um, participate in outreach programs um, I think I've already covered all of this. This is what some of our uh, counties have been doing. For Mercer County, they're working with their ballparks. I already mentioned Somerset County. Hudson County has been doing a lot of uh, programming or advertising with the path and light rail. This is from Hutterton County. Um, I love this billboard. It's I, I, I think it's actually on 287 or out on 202. We also have a newsletter that's coming up. I don't know if uh, Westfield would be interested in doing an ad, but this is going to be a statewide newsletter that will be mailed, printed and mailed to every mayor and every legislator in New Jersey. Um, so how can you help prepare? Obviously we want you to take all of our messaging that is on our website and put it on your website, share it with your employees, partner with uh, New Jersey Clean Communities for a Bag Up NJ event. And we want you to obviously um, share any of the messaging you have. And if you have a website, you know, include all this information. If you wanna do a um, press release, we'd be more than happy to highlight that with you on our website. We also have uh, at njclean.org, which is our main website, we have a monthly newsletter. We would love for you to sign up for that, which is right on, the, on our main um, website and stay in touch. And obviously you're a, biz, you know, you're a business community. So if you have businesses that are already doing some great outreach relative to this or that have already gone bag free, this is the time to highlight them. Joanne, thank you. Joanne and Aaron, thank you both so much for your really outstanding, informative, educational presentations. Uh, I'm really impressed. And, and we will be following up with you on some of these things, uh, some of these items, Joanne, to see how we as an organization representing all the businesses in downtown Westfield can promote uh, this new law which as you said is 43 day, short days away from implementation. So uh, we have our work cut out for us. Um, I wanted to open this up to questions. I see that there is already one question in the chat from our friends at Eye to Eye um, on East Broad Street. And this is something that I actually 
get a lot from some of from, from merchants. They want to know if they've purchased bags, plastic bags, maybe that'll last them, let's say three more months. Can they use them until they're used up or do they have to go on May 4th? So I don't know who can best answer that, but- I can take that one. Uh, that's a really common question, but we, we wouldn't be allowing people to use extra stock after May 4th. Um, the, there was an 18 month ramp up to May 4th. So we're not allowing people to use extra. Um, our recommendation for you know, extra bags are either to have them recycled using a plastic film recycler. Um, so there are companies out there that specialize in plastic film recycling. And I know that a lot of times they're, they're looking for feedstock for their materials. Or we have been recently suggesting to people to donate them to like a local senior center uh, so that those residents maybe can use them when they shop. I know that they, they like the lightweight handles for, you know, if they have wheelchairs or walkers and they can, you know, hang them on there. So we have been recently recommending that um, to, to donate them to the, those residents for them to sh use themselves while they go do their shopping. Okay. Oh, that helps. That, and Bob, uh, I'm going to jump in. I don't think any okay, Joanne. anyone on here that doesn't already know this, um, but the town of Westfield has the best recycling center um, in the county, and they do accept plastic um, bags for recycling. So you don't have to go far if that ends up being your option. That is correct. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I'm wondering if anyone else wants to jump in if anyone else has any other questions or comments or concerns for Erin or Joanne. Um, now would be the time. Hmm. Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing any. So um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just follow up with one question, which is um, for us, for the Downtown Westfield Corporation, I'm sure you've worked with other improvement districts or have been working with other improvement districts to promote this law. What, what do you feel have been sort of some of the best ways for us other than doing, a, doing this webinar and putting it on our website so that others can watch it who weren't here? What can we do? What, what are your suggestions for what we can do to help get the word out? And that's... Uh I love that question because that's actually what I was going to pose back to you. Um, our toolkit on bagupnj.com was really designed or, or developed based on different ideas from, you know, that we've interacted with different stakeholders for the past year. Um, so as someone develops, you know, an idea or asks a question or says, this is what they need, we try to develop something to meet that need. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone shops differently. Westfield, I just happen to know, has a whole different vibe than many downtowns because people shop there. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of foot traffic. So your education may be a little bit different. Um, but I'm just hoping, you know, whatever's on our website, you can use. But truly, if there's something on there that you like your businesses may need that you don't see, this is what our role is, is to help you, you know, fit that niche maybe that your customers may want. Um, but that's why I said you can do it. I, you know, we don't want to put anything in the sidewalk that people are going to trip over. But as they walk by, this is something, you know, the signs that we use, we put up at fairs. We don't want to do something that promotes litter. Um, so just having a sign somewhere when people walk by. Um, I think a lot of people know the bag ban is coming, but they may not know the details. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's helpful to, to engage them just in the conversation. So we can use our email list above and beyond our merchant email list. We have a much greater email list for the consumers to get the word out about this as well. I, I would love that. I, I think this is, you know, as I said earlier, the most far reaching piece of legislation that affects everyone. Yeah. And uh, 
we need everyone involved to help educate, mm -hmm. to make the transition better for all of us. And right. we don't want businesses to have to deal with customers that don't know on May 4th. Right, right. And I assume that you and and Aaron on the state level are working with some of the bigger chains, especially the grocery chains. We have two major uh, grocery stores in our district, both Trader Joe's and Stop and Shop. And I, I would have to assume that they are aware on the corporate level that this is coming and they're planning for that. Yeah, um, the New Jersey Food Council represents the larger food change and chains, the convenience stores, Uber Eats. Um, so I, I, I'm very confident that they are in the know, well, you know, engaged and, and ready um, for May 4th. I think it's the smaller stores um, that may not be part of a downtown, that may not be part of a chamber or another business association that, you know, don't know the details and may not know um, maybe about the bag ban they know, but they don't realize it pertains to polystyrene um, or the straw law. So it's, it's going to take a little bit of a learning curve to get there. Um, sure. sure. I agree with you, Ann. It's really education, getting the education out there right. as far reaching. That's our goal. Exactly. And that's why I'm so appreciative to both of you and your organizations and uh, Melanie at the New Jersey Business Action Council for helping put this together for us. Um, I'll just see if there's any sort of last, last minute questions or, or issues if anyone wants to unmute and just ask anything. Um, now would be the time. And it doesn't sound like it. So with that, I think I'm going to We'll call the webinar to a close. But once again, Erin uh, and Joanne, I want to thank you both so much for your time this morning. And for all of those uh, who are watching, I want to thank you for participating with us. And um, it's, it's time to, uh, to uh, ban the bag and, uh, and get, uh, get our environment uh, going in a positive direction. So thank you very much, Erin and Joanne and everyone else. And uh, we'll put this uh, video on our website uh, shortly, as soon as, as soon as it's ready, hopefully later today. And then we'll send out a link to, to all of our to all of our merchants and our property owners. So thank, thank, you, Bob. You, so, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you.